Hi guys, Jeff Westfall, starting a new series, and this is going to be called Fencing for the Martial Arts. Uh, <clears throat> there's a bit that can be learned, more than a bit, <laughs> there's a significant amount that can be learned from the blade work in fencing, but I think uh, more arts can draw from its footwork. Um, its footwork is virtually universal to any sport where you're standing on two feet, where there are going to be moments where your ability to judge distance forward and backward and move within that distance very precisely and very well balanced. Any sport where you'd like to be able to do that, fencing footwork is awesome. So let's get started. Um, in future videos, I'll try to show you things. First, I'll show you more advanced footwork than I'll show you today. And I will also try to relate it to using other martial arts weapons, maybe even some empty handed techniques. So I'm going to start with the extension. Well, first, let's start with the stance. My stance, my rear foot is 90 degrees to the opponent, so you see that it's sideways. That's my left foot if I'm right-handed, unless I'm being uh, really nerdy and learning defense on both sides. My right foot is in line with my heel. It's lined up with my heel. It's not like this. It can be like this. To be honest, really what you're doing most of the time is most of your weights on your back foot. You're supposed to be evenly distributed for sure, for sure. But because fencing is so aggressive, you're gonna to tend to have a little more weight to the rear, ready to explode forward, but also ready to back up. So it's 50-50 it's when you're playing, but when you're learning the classical footwork and you take some of the bounce out of it, you'll tend to have the rear heel down with more weight on the rear foot. But it changes rapidly as you get faster. So, if you want to feel this really well, stand on this foot, keep this foot down, keep your knee out, don't let your knee turn in, and turn and look 90 degrees to the right and point your toes at who you're fencing. Now, move your foot out until your heels are about as far apart as the width of your shoulders, and you've got the idea of your basic stance. This hand needs to be, now I couldn't do this very well for a long time because of my bad shoulder. I would always be like this. But the idea is to have this out of the line of fire and under the rules of fencing, I cannot cover or protect target. I can't make my arm into armor for myself. Um, you can debate whether or not that would be wise. That's irrelevant. In, in sport fencing, it's illegal. So I need to keep this arm out of the way. So you can either do that or not. It does have, uh, it does have an, element, an element of balance to the technique when you do it right. It takes a while to get used to it though. So our first basic technique we're going to do from here is an extension. Now what an extension is, is from my, now look at my, by the way, let's look at my alignment before we talk about the extension. I'm not like this, not that that would ever be wrong. I'm not like this. I'm not like this. And I'm not like this. My tip, my hand, and my eyes are pretty close to being on the same line. And that's pretty important. I want to be able to keep that. <laughs> I aimed at the center of the screen on my phone and it made it look like I missed because the camera's over there. Okay, <laughs> that wasn't a, as dramatic an example. Where's the camera? There's the camera. Yes. So you're trying to keep a, a, a very still sight picture while being able to move really fast. Your ability to control where your tip is with your hands is crucial. Um, when you hold your weapon, by the way, this is an orthopedic grip. I don't have a French grip here at home right now. It would be more like a regular stick, not exactly like. With an orthopedic grip, it takes very little effort to keep your weapon in your hand, and it's very easy to manipulate. Now, when you hold a weapon, your major holding power is, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing blade work, banging your blade around, your last three fingers are everything and your other two fingers are here. Very much like my recent video on how to handle daggers on manipulating the dagger, it's the three finger grip. But when I wanna be very, very precise with where the tip is, which is not the case when I'm banging my weapon around, then I pinch with these two fingers right on this surface and this surface, I'm pinching. And the degree to which I relax that pinch or tighten it makes my tip of my blade go up 
and down, but my hands should be holding more or less in the same spot in space. I shouldn't be doing this unless I'm doing it to, you know, to try to draw him in, uh, get inside his head a little bit. That's technically bad form, but bad form is never bad form if you're using it purposely to get the opponent to jump on what he thinks is an advantage, but you have to be good enough to back it up. So anyway, here I am, got my blade in alignment, which means you can draw a line from my elbow all the way out to my tip. Again, not that this would ever be wrong, but you don't have maximum extension, the number of, number of centimeters from your shoulder to your tip when you're extended is maximum this way. When you're in your guard position, the line goes from the elbow straight out to the target. And the opponent ideally should be staring at the business end of your weapon. That takes a little practice and it takes a little work in front of a mirror to get used to. Anyway, you, you may or may not choose to give yourself that high of a standard with your blade work, and that's cool. So let's get back to the footwork. So here I am. I want you to look at that, that piece of wood I've got screwed up to my, uh, to my studs here in my garage. So what I'm going to do is extend. That's the first thing that happens. And then as if someone grabbed my blade just as I was finishing my extension and pulled and forced me to take a step out with my front foot, that takes me into the lunge. So I can do an extension without a lunge. You can extend without a lunge very easily. The opponent's dumb enough to walk right up to you and give you an opportunity to do that. It's gonna be right there. But he is obviously too far away for me to hit with a simple extension. And no fencer worth his salt is gonna stand there in range but the extension is still vital to learn to get right. I'm pinching my thumb and forefinger right now because otherwise, if I'm holding on with a death grip, my tip is flying all over creation. I'm not sure where the heck it's gonna go. So now I'm no longer gripping tight. Now, if I see my opponent start to bang my blade, my bottom three fingers come into play. But if I wanna be precise and not miss my target, I relax those three fingers. And that transition, squeeze, 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 back and forth between the last three fingers and the first two is a whole lot of the uh, part of the art offensive. So here I am, I'm too far away to hit with just extension. So I do a lunge and I hit. Now, I came back with what's called a recovery. Extension, lunge. I, it's, I have a bad habit. I want to apologize right now to my fencing teacher, John. I know that I have a bad habit of taking my knee past my big toes, and he would be the first person to tell you that's bad for your knees, okay? So I don't want my knee to go past my big toe. And if I drift a little forward of that, don't imitate it. It doesn't look cool. I just happen to have flexible uh, spry legs for an old man and I still like using it maybe sometimes too much. So I'm here. Now my recovery ideally should not go up. My center of mass stayed at the same place. So I can, I can lunge and recover smoothly. I'm not doing an inchworm where I drop down, come back up, or come back up on the recovery. Now I can recover forward. Let's say I do my lunge. It's not sufficient to score, which would stop the action at a sport match. It's not sufficient to score, but my opponent backed up. I don't want to back up if they backed up. I got them to move back on the strip. I always, always want to, want to possess more and more of the strip behind me and less and less of it in front of me. That's something my fencing teacher, John Yarger, taught me that's huge. So anytime you can take some ground, you do it. So the forward recovery is a, a great tool for that. I do my lunge, now let's say I just missed. I missed the target, I bring this foot up and I'm back in my fencing stance. I just get back under, feel my heel, get under my center, and I feel ready to do some more movement. Okay, so that takes us to moving the base. This is the attack. But sometimes I can tell that my opponent is too close for any of that or too far away for any of that and I want to make an adjustment. Now this is going to be simple for anybody who's boxed. And this is simply the advance and retreat shuffle step. Now classically in fencing, and I should have told you this on the uh, lunge, classically as you go out from here, your toes come up and your heels skimming the earth. That's classic form. 
So if you, if you, if you can take a photo in mid extension, my heel is like that before it settles down. Classically. I don't always do a very good job. Sorry again, John, if I look crappy to you. Anyway, so um, the advance and the retreat are just for making adjustments until things feel, whoa, that looks pretty good. Like you can get a good shot on what you want to do and keep your balance. So we have the dance, we have retreat, we have the lunge, we have the stance, we have the recovery. The last, uh, the last footwork for the first lesson, um, and this ties in with my new series called on twist stance in the martial arts, is I'm going to twist walk. Now all this is, is very old school, fencers don't do this uh, as much anymore as they used to, uh, because people used to fight duels out in European city streets where there were cobblestones, missing cobblestones, so holes you could break your knee or your ankle, and cobblestones that had been pulled up out of the ground sitting in front of your big toe like a giant brick. So that messed up uh, the footing a lot of times. And smooth footwork like this is a quick way to stub your toe or to trip. So classically, people would move this way. And they different, different versions, depending on how much they trust the, the footing. If it's very dark and they don't trust the footing at all, they, they may be just feeling their way around very carefully till they feel a moment. So that's what I call the twist walk. Uh, John only showed me that in, the, in light of, this is the way they used to do it, they don't do it very much anymore. Although I have seen some fencers who their opponent backed up a little bit, and instead of using a ton of energy to close the gap, just simply walked a few steps. Much more efficient way to close that distance without burning as much energy. And if you're a competitive fencer, you don't know how many bouts you're going to have in a day going from the morning, maybe to midnight. You want to conserve energy and still be ready to explode all the time. So let's leave it there. Um, fencing for the martial arts. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll show you a little bit more next time and gradually we'll start to relate this more and more to other things besides this. But I will talk a little bit about this too. Take care.